So after almost 10 months of living in our new house, I'm finally getting around to actually setting up an office space. And yes, that means up until this point, all of my administrative duties have really just been at the kitchen table. Please don't judge me, but also if you can relate to that struggle, let me know down in the comments section below. But y'all, we are redoing the space. It's gonna be a shared office for Morgan and myself. And y'all, it's gonna be over the top. It's gonna be fan freaking tabulous. I'm here for it. It's gonna be modern, edgy, cool, weird, off the wall, quirky. It's gonna be all of the things, okay? So, if you wanna go along with me on that journey, let me know down in the comment section below as well. And maybe we can just kind of document that whole entire process. But I'm also trying to save money wherever possible. I mean, even to the point that we found a couch for the space, because yes, I wanted a couch in my office. We found a couch for the space in the Ikea as is like clearance section. So obviously we need a little side table to go next to that couch, right? So we are actually making one today and I have a very specific vision in mind. So, so go along with me on this process. I am actually using this cutting board right here. Now I actually found this at a place called the Christmas tree shop. And although there's not one here locally next to me, there is one close to some family up north in Ohio. So I checked it out one day and was honestly a little gobsmacked at how much non Christmas stuff they have. Actually, I don't think they have any Christmas trees or really anything non-Christmas throughout the rest of the year. But I found this, it was like 15 bucks, and I'm like, heck yeah, this cutting board is going home with me. However, there was a little bit of a predicament where my klutzy self accidentally dropped it and the slate popped out. But that is completely okay because instead of that, we will actually be filling this with an epoxy resin we're going to do like this really cool kind of space theme in here we'll make this little strip right here look kind of cosmic it's going to look a little universal so to speak and we're going to do that with epoxy we are also going to be doing that with a cricut cutting machine some vinyl etc we'll get to it when we get to it right but first things first i am using a pigment to mix in with the epoxy resin and that is this stuff right here from solar color dust it's called like this little kaleido shift not sponsored and as a matter of fact i'll even say this that this seems very expensive to me. I could be completely mistaken, completely out of touch here, but Morgan surprised me with this. And I mean, I think that this little thing was like 10 bucks. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's like kind of insane. And that's like one gram. So we will be using this with that epoxy and pouring it down here into the center. However, there is one caveat that this will actually show up the best and look the best when applied down onto a black surface. So what I'm doing now, is grabbing some black chalk paint, the Starcraft to be exact, and we're gonna paint in this little strip right here where that slate once was. Now, since we are using this cutting board as the top of our little side table, we will also obviously need some legs for it, right? So I had a very specific vision in mind. And so we headed over to the Home Depot to grab some steel pipes to actually construct into some legs for this table. Now, I will also forewarn you that this is not the most affordable option out there. If you want a more affordable option, I do highly suggest using the hairpin legs from Amazon. I will have those listed and linked for you all down below as an option, but I just really wanted this like more industrial look and vibe for the office. All right, so I am back. I have all the little doodads, all the little bits and bobs, all of everything that we picked up there for the legs of our little side table that we are adding on to this little cutting board. So we will get to that here in a second, I swear. Um, but as far as this goes, this paint is completely dry. So what we can do now is go ahead and mix up some epoxy resin to fill all of this in. Now, let me just say something about epoxy. It is a great material to work with. However, it can also be dangerous. You definitely wanna make sure that you take some precautions. You wanna make sure that you're wearing gloves, goggles, a respirator, 
if not just like a full faced respirator as well. Um, and also you definitely want to be working in a very, very, very well ventilated area. So what we're going to do is actually go on to totalboat.com. They have a little epoxy resin calculator for the type that we're using today. We'll go through that process and basically see how much we need for this. All right, so this is the stuff that I'm using right here, this tabletop epoxy. I'm gonna scroll down here and here is a link to their epoxy calculator. Now for the length of this little section right here, and that's all we're measuring is like this little black strip right here. That's 15 and three quarters of an inch. The width on this is three inches and the coating thickness. So basically how deep does the epoxy need to be? So for this, I didn't measure how deep this little area is. It is one eighth of an inch. And so what we'll do is actually go in here and put in the decimal form, which is 0.125. And then we can see here that we will need basically 3.39 ounces. All right, so for this tabletop epoxy from Total Boat, this is a one to one ratio, meaning whatever you use of one, you need to use an equal part of the other. So what I typically like to do with something like this is actually go in here and with the ounces, basically just kind of go in here, maybe fill up the, the epoxy, one part of it, let's say like to the two ounces, and then pour in the other part, let's say just up to the four, just as a quick and dirty example, okay? However, there's not a measurement for like three, three and a half or anything like that. So what I'm actually gonna do is use the ML version. So basically I'm gonna be doing a 50 ML because well, 50 milliliters is gonna be 1.69 fluid ounce. That's probably gonna get us the closest to what we're gonna need for what we're working with today. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna fill up one part of the epoxy resin to the 50 and then to top it off with the other part up to the 100 so that we have an even dispersion and even ratio of a one-to-one -one mixture. So now I'm gonna go in here and actually stir all this up. And for that, I am using a silicone stir like you can see right here. And I will continue to do this for about five minutes. Now while mixing up part A and part B of the epoxy resin, you really wanna stir thoroughly and also be scraping the sides as you go. You really wanna steer away from doing a whipping style of motion because that will just get more and more air bubbles into your epoxy resin. Instead, just do a normal, very thorough stir and scrape the sides as you go. So when I was adding this pigment to the epoxy resin, truth be told, I wanted to start very small and work my way up. After the first try, which was not nearly enough, I tried to get just a little bit more in there and then way more than I thought came out. It was, it was way too much. And even though the epoxy resin is much darker than I would have liked because of that pigment coming out in such a huge chunk, I still like it overall. It's just, again, much darker than I anticipated. I'm also going in here and adding just a little bit of glitter from StarCraft as well. Now, before I actually pour the epoxy onto my cutting board, I wanna go ahead and tape up the edges with some tuck tape. This should really prevent the epoxy from leaking out and really give us a nice, firm, strong barrier. Even though the epoxy is self-leveling, I am still gonna try and help that out as much as possible by covering as much of the surface area with that epoxy as possible. I'm even gonna go in here and try to help that out just a little bit with a little spatula. Now, just to get any remaining air bubbles out, I'm gonna go in here with a torch and just run it across this epoxy resin real quick. All right, so while that's outside drying slash curing, I'm gonna go in here and go ahead and get our vinyl decal ready to customize the part with the epoxy resin. So let me come over here to crafty.net. Now I fully realize that this says it is for a nail art SVG, but that also just goes to show you that you don't have to follow the rules. Just because something is for a specific purpose does not mean that you need to use it for that specific purpose, if that makes sense. So let me make sure that the SVG option is selected and do a one click download. And that's really like the beauty of this is I can go in here and download all of these files. Like I can download as much as I want because all the SVG files for your cutting machine or laser or sublimation printer, whatever you want to use them for, it's all unlimited. Just like one low monthly price, it's like $9.99 per month. It's insanely good. So let me come over here now to Cricut Design Space and I do have this already uploaded onto the Cricut Design Space canvas. Now, what I also want to do is actually go in here and create a template 
for our cutting board. Now, I do still have the little piece of slate from that cutting board right here. This is about 15 and three quarters of an inch tall and about three inches wide. So I'm coming here and create a template so that I know how to lay out our design for our vinyl. Let's right click that, send that to back. And then as far as our nail art, let's come over here and click on ungroup. All right, so I'm not wanting to use all of these, but let's go in here and just kind of play around with it and see what we come up with. I do like this little moon for the center. Let me kind of resize that. And this is really the beauty of templates is that you can basically resize it to see exactly what that's gonna look like in real life. So let's come in here and let's do maybe two sets of these stars right here. Let me right click that and click on duplicate. Drag this down. Maybe we could even want to mirror one of these. So let's, um, let's just go in here and click on flip, flip horizontal like so. That looks pretty cool. And then let's grab this little moon right here and bring this over. Maybe resize this, right click it, duplicate it, maybe drag it down here for the very bottom. Maybe let's see what that looks like mirrored. Let's uh, click on flip, flip horizontal. And yeah, I'm honestly, I'm really kind of liking all of this. I think it looks really good. So let's go ahead and delete out this right here. Let's grab our little template here, bring that out of the way, and then click and drag over all of these layers. And then I'm going to make sure that everything is spaced properly. So let me come up here, click on align. Let's click on first off center horizontally. And then let's go ahead and click on align again. Now this time I'm actually wanting to click on distribute vertically like so, just to make sure that everything is lining up the way it's supposed to be. However, I am wanting a little bit more space between all of this. Let me just click on that and then just use little, little arrows on your keyboard to kind of move that. I think that looks a little bit better. All right, I, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm really good with that. So let me go ahead and click and drag over all of this because I am wanting this all to be like the exact same color. I want to cut out on the same sheet of vinyl, which is this magic stuff right here. The, this is the Style Tech Opal adhesive vinyl. All this stuff will be listed and linked down below. And if you are a Crafty.net member, you do get an everyday discount on all this stuff from 143 Vinyl, which is like my favorite place to go to get all my supplies. So let me come over here, click on Weld to make that all just one single solid piece. And I think we are good, y'all. Let's go ahead and come over here and click on this little eye icon next to our template, and then come up here and click on Make It. I am gonna be using a mat, so I'm gonna click on that. And because of the size of this, I will need to use a larger mat. I'll need to use the 12 by 24. Let's click on continue. Now this particular mat has been through the ringer, so don't judge me too harshly, but I'm going ahead and just lay my vinyl out here. I'll come over here also and click on light cardstock because even though it says light cardstock, that's gonna be like the best cut setting for me, for my machine, my blade, for this particular type of vinyl. Always do test cuts though. Let's go ahead and feed this into our Cricut Maker. And then let's go ahead and click on that for it to start cutting. Now I'm just grabbing a little weeding tool and going in here and removing basically everything that's not our design. All right, so here is our design all cut out onto our vinyl and basically ready to go. I'm just grabbing some transfer tape, go and roll some out, sticky side up, take our vinyl, apply it down face first. All right, so here it is all done, ready to be applied to our board. Once it's done curing, all we would need to do is just peel off this backing paper first. All right, so it's time to show a little leg. So let me show you all exactly what I'm thinking for the legs of this table. So here is what is supposed to represent our tabletop, our cutting board, right? So we are gonna be using these pipes from the Home Depot to actually construct our legs. Again, just remember, this is not the most affordable option. It is just the more, I don't know, in line with what the vision is for our particular office. You could always go with those hairpin table legs from Amazon if you wanted to. But let me kind of show you exactly how I imagine constructing this. All right, so first and foremost, I will be using this little floor phalange right here. Now, keep in mind, if you are gonna go this route, that you do want to make sure that all the pipes and everything is like the same diameter. It's all made for the same diameter. And for this, I am using a half inch. So here is this right here. Now. 
Again, I'm not an artist, but I'm gonna go in here and kind of show you all exactly what I'm thinking for all of this. All right, so this right here is going to represent our little floor flange. Now, we are not gonna be putting this onto the floor. Instead, we'll actually be bracketing this up to the bottom side of our tabletop. So let me go ahead and duplicate this real quick. And let's just pretend that this is currently up underneath of our tabletop, okay? All right, so from there, what will be coming down from this little floor flange is like this little four inch pipe right here, double-sided nipple on this. Let's go in here and kind of show you what I'm thinking. This will be connected into this. Everybody with me so far? That will then be connected into this little T-shaped connector, for lack of a better word. I'm sure that there is a very technical term out there for this. I just, I just don't know it. From there, we're gonna have two more of these little four inch double-sided nipple pipes coming off of the, the T. We will then need to make a little curve to actually extend down to the legs themselves. And I'm gonna use like this little 90 degree elbow right here for that. Now you are gonna to wanna to go in here and kind of make sure that the height will come out to what you want it to be. So for me, I needed to actually pair up two different size pipes, like this one and this one. So an eight inch and a 12 inch. And to connect those, I am gonna be using this little connector right here. So let me go in here and draw this out real quick. I know that the proportions are not correct. Just, just go with me on this. Last but not least, we will definitely want something to, to hit the floor with, right? Because we do not want a, a metal thread like what's on here to come in contact with our, or with our floors. So instead, I'm gonna be using one of these little caps right here, just to screw onto the end. Now let me go in here and just duplicate this. And that'll be the exact same for the other leg. Then we do it all over again for the other little flange down here. Just like that right there, but all together. So now let's just go in here and put it all together. And there we go. One set of table legs, as well as two very, very dirty hands. From there, I went outside with my PPE, my mask, my goggles, and my rubber gloves, and sanded down the top layer of that epoxy with a 220 grit sandpaper. I really just wanna do a really quick scuff sand on all of this to get it prepped and ready for the next layer of epoxy after we apply down our layer of vinyl. Also be sure to really get around the raised little edges and kind of smooth that out as well. From there, I'm just grabbing my vinyl and applying it down to our board on top of that epoxy. Now we'll just need to mix up one last little coat of epoxy just to go over top and barely cover all of this vinyl. So from there, once it's cured, it is all about attaching those legs to the underside of that cutting board slash tabletop, and then we're finished. Hey, thanks so much for watching. And if you are new around here to this channel and you also want to learn more crafty things, then definitely consider stamping that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications. And if you'd like to do so, maybe you want to help us out just a little bit, also consider stamping that like button and dropping a comment down below. Thank y'all so much for watching. We love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty, y'all.